God. Oh my God. Oh my God. It played twice. I thought I I set this up in a way where it wasn't gonna blow anybody's eardrums out, and then it blew my own eardrum. What is that? Well, I mean, that's what you get for thinking you have everything figured out, and you don't. So there you go. <laughs> you, I guess you voted today. How how did you tell? How could you tell? I haven't said you, anything because you put a big <laughs> "I voted" sticker on your stupid head. <laughs> Listen, how else? Is our audience supposed to know that I'm better than them? <laughs> You're better than me. I did not vote. Today. That's right. Exactly. See, you I voted. did my part. <laughs> voted for the both of us. I had a lot of things going on, you know? Also, I it's have true. no idea anything about any of the candidates for this. What even is it? Uh, the midterm elections. You mean you weren't paying attention when dad went off for 30 minutes about who we should vote for? While he was supposed to be getting my kids so, ice so cream. So I could take notes on who I shouldn't be voting for. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> anyway. Uh, hello, everybody. Who's here for some Pokemon news? Because too bad yeah. you're getting news <laughs> about voting here in America. Yeah. Uh, I hope I'm not blowing anybody's eardrums out with my voice. I lowered it. I'm still on the ragtag setup today. I uh, am a little sorry, but uh, also not because I've been very busy. And when we come back next week... Will, what do you say? Next week might be a fun yes. time. I don't want to say too much, but next yeah, week but, might uh, be a full-on setup. I will. Uh, I will be there for that. <laughs> very, very. They, they were. It's going to be a little different next week. Yes, hopefully. Um. Anyway, we got a lot of notifications here because I haven't been streaming in a while. I haven't streamed on mm -hmm. Twitch in, in too long. Uh. Also, another announcement: Sunday. I think I'm going to make my return to Twitch. Uh, so oh. Sunday will be my, I uh, will start streaming again. But then I'm like going away the next weekend. So but I'll have a nice new setup for streaming on Sunday. So that'll be nice. There you go. Uh, anyway. Oh, Wolf Den Dad's in the chat. I hope you didn't cancel out my vote. <laughs> <laughs> Big potential that happened to Dad. I did what I thought was right. <laughs> <laughs> uh don't worry i didn't because i i i completely <laughs> forgot what was i i've been i've been doing a lot okay i just got back from rhode island anyway <laughs> thank you larry the koopa for the nine months oh uh, no i'm sorry for the 21 months hey wolf bros will you roll around at the speed of sound i will always sonic forces came out today i haven't gotten it yet so i might get sonic it tonight Front sonic frontiers came out today Forces gonna, is the one you don't like. I'm going to do that so much. Ugh. That, that hurt. Okay. <laughs> that off hurt. Uh, mic game yeah, is a little uh, too aggressive when you lure, lean more than two feet from your mic. Yeah, I can fix it. Uh, neither of us have played Sonic Frontiers yet, but we will be talking about the reaction to Sonic Frontiers a little later on in the show. Uh, so, yeah, we're going to heads up. I just turned my noise gate off. Uh, there, yeah, I'm gonna get it. I'm excited about it. Uh, yeah, but I haven't gotten it yet. I was hoping to do it last night, but I ended up doing a lot of work last night, and I'm glad I did that because I did fuck all today. Um, anyway, King Wizard, thank you for the five months. Ao, I'm choosing the duck for the Pokemons. The duck. The du I guess there's a duck Pokemon this time around. The duck looks stupid. Um, they all look stupid. You're gonna know about all the new starters, will? Yes. Today, Ray Zeflin, thank you for the 48 months. Pee pee poo poo. <laughs> Abraham, probably. Okay. Uh, Unbroken Alchemy, thank you for the Prime subscription. Viper Blade gave us a paragraph. Hey Bob, I'm going through your old gaming streams, and I'm up to. Oh my god, that's a terrible idea. I'm up to one in 2020 when you played Fall Guys with AJ. The main topic was planning the cult of Bob. Scoot was third on your list of simps back then, but you wouldn't name the others in your top five. One of them was probably Hannah. All right, that was before uh, she, she was named. <laughs> yeah, before she had a name. <laughs> before I, I exposed her to you people. Uh, th I don't know the other ones. Uh, my mom's probably up there. My dad's in the <laughs> chat already. He's probably up there. Uh Thrill House, thanks for the 100 bits. Oh, we talk in Pokemon? Yes, Thrill House. Yes. Welcome. And Riser64, thanks for the 15 months. Anyway, now we can finally get on with the show, huh? What do you say? Yes. Let's... Uh, oh, 
But before we do that, let's briefly talk about how there's an indie wo- world showcase going on tomorrow. Tomorrow? <laughs> yes. So we're missing everything. This show is missing everything. We really, we should really talk about like changing our time slot because we like Nintendo always schedules their direct the day after. Sometimes we get lucky. Last Once direct we got lucky. Last direct we got lucky. Yeah. Anyway. Yes, Nintendo has a direct, uh, an Indie World showcase uh, uh, scheduled for tomorrow. They tweeted, mm-hmm. tune in on November 9th at 9 a.m. Pacific time, which is 12? Yes. yes, 12 noon. For a new Indie World showcase featuring roughly 25 minutes of information of upcoming indie games headed to Nintendo Switch. Yay. Uh, mm. So that's cool. I love a good indie game. Uh, I don't like how they kind of blow their load on the indie stuff. And then for the regular directs, there's, you know, not a lot of indie stuff. And that's kind of yeah. what I'm most interested in. So that kind of sucks. But well, I think I think the the main idea is, you know, give indie games their own special showcase because they could get lost in like the triple A true uh reveals that happen during a regular Nintendo Direct. I just it's also sad because uh people are really excited for uh the triple eyes, which is a new word that I that I learned from uh, oh yeah the curse of the golf guy. The triple eyes are like big time indie games, and a lot of people watch this stuff for the big time indie games, and all of the other stuff gets kind of you know filtered out, and then they say, yeah. oh that indie world sucked because it didn't have Silk Song in it. And it's like no Silk yeah. Song would probably be in a main direct, not so much in an indie world. Mm-hmm. But I'm excited for this. Last Indie World, I wasn't very happy with it. There weren't a lot of games that were my thing. So uh, that's why I wasn't too jazzed. But uh, hopefully mm-hmm. uh, this time around, uh, we'll get some platformers. That's really what I'm trying to say. We'll get some platformers. We'll get some things that maybe debuted in Game Pass or on PlayStation. Roller Drone would be perfect. Roller Drone would Switch. be good. I'm just saying. Griffin Nix says sports story. That's a good point. We don't know anything about sports, yeah. story, but that's another thing that should be in a regular direct too. And people are saying Silk Song in the chat, which of course, I think that's another one that's too big that should just be in a regular direct. Anyway, uh, so that's going on tomorrow. So we're gonna miss it. But if you tune yeah. into the Nintendo podcast, we will have a whole episode about it. So that's why I have two podcasts. That's not why, Maybe. but it helps. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, we should instead talk about Pokemon because today there was some Pokemon news. Apparently yesterday there was some Pokemon leaks and then today there was a trailer that was not good. But (laughs) you want to talk about the leaks. So let's talk about the leaks first. Okay. A leaker got a hold of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet two weeks before the official street date. So of course we're dumping they're dumping screenshots online before the game's actually launched. Right now the images are all over Twitter and Reddit, so you might as well read about them here on Kotaku through uh the Wolf Den podcast. Uh <laughs> all of the screenshots are taken from the Spanish version of the game and appear to be from a single person. Unfortunately, they deleted their account by the time uh that Kotaku t- uh attempted to verify them, but the genie's out of the bottle, so let's see what uh there is to see. Of course, if you'd rather not get a peek of Scarlet and Violet two weeks before its release, um, turn off the podcast now. The rest of you, let's go in. Yeah. Now, there are people who do want to be surprised. I see. Yes. I, I've seen the discourse on Twitter. People are upset that they keep releasing these trailers and they keep hyping up these trailers and there's nothing in the trailers. That they, they give us barely any information, which is not abnormal for Pokemon to do. And I saw AJ mm-hmm. specifically was like, good, I don't want to know anything until I start playing the game. So right. if you're one of those people who doesn't want to know anything until you start playing the game, don't watch this. Yes. You have been uh, warned. Turn off now. Come back in like 20 minutes. Yeah. And we'll move on to like the officially released Pokemon news. Uh, but even that, even some people don't want to know about that. Yeah. But, All right. So in that case, wait 30 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> the rest of you, three, two, yeah, one. Go. First up, we have the likely first evolution of the new fire starter, uh, Few Coco. Did I get that right? Fway Coco. Fway Coco. So I right, right, right. Fway Coco. Uh, Crocalor 
looks similar to its pre-evolution, except it's wearing a wide brim hat. Honestly, this one looks kind of mid, except for the hat. It doesn't look that different from Fue Coco. Um, if I if I don't get even a little bit of the trainer's remorse when ev- evolving from my starter f- at 18 or, or 16 or 18, then what are the designers even doing? Here's hoping that the grass type and the water type evolve into mega freaks. That uh, sucks. So, that sucks. <laughs> that is the... Uh, realization of that simpsons meme where lisa's trying to say don't buy the new malibu sacy it's the same doll what they just put a hat on her to disguise all the vapid sexism it, that she represents and then smithers says but she has a new hat <laughs> this i like this That's what that S- is. somebody tweeted kind of looks like this and it's a stimpy as a as a <laughs> as a crocodile <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you can't really tell because he's covered up by a little bit of grass. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, that's not... I don't like that. It's a little... I mean, the hat's a little stupid, but I mean... Yeah. We, we, the, the middle evolution is always stupid. It is. So, so I, I don't I don't want to completely uh, weed out Fue Coco. But at the same time, like, just putting a hat on it is, like, not only stupid, but it's, like, lazy as well. Mm-hmm. So, that is true, too. Um... New Pokemon such as uh, Flamingo and Tor... Ah, these fucking names. Tor- Toruntula have also leaked. Presumably, Flamin- Flamingo is an amalgamation of Flamingo and Amigo. And Taro... Uh, Tar- Taro... Mega Guru Greymon. Is around Tarantula. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's what that is. Okay, That's what I had trouble saying. Uh, also see a Ralts and a Buizel in the party, which means that we're likely getting a mix of Pokemon generations in these games. Players were already upset uh, when Sword and Shield producer announced that not, not all Pokemon will be introduced in the national decks. It's likely that Scarlet and Violet will also not contain the entire national deck. Yeah, I, th- I don't think that's a surprise. Uh, yeah. if, if if Sword and Shield didn't, this one's not going to either. But I, I, I hope g- I hope they reach back and get some that weren't in Scarlet and Violet and throw them in this one, or at least like expand the roster. You know, like whoever was already in Sword and Shield, put them in here, and then just add more from the back catalog. You know, to try and fill out the missing Pokemon. Right. Right. Um, at least Smallvid is getting a cute evolution into Dolvid. Uh. Its thin green body reminds uh, the writer a bit of a Rosalina evolutionary type uh, down to the uh, social anxiety that Smallvid and Badoo seem to share. Fans have also been tweeting about region-specific uh, Tauros. Again, this is something that can't be verified yet. Um, yeah, and there's a picture of what seems to be a region-specific Tauros. Like a dark like a dark yeah. Tauros, like a purplish-black Tauros. So where did they show the other evolutions? Of the other other starters, because I don't see them. I think it was just the one. Okay. Yeah. What's 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 small small live? Oh, that guy. Okay, I don't care about yeah. that guy. Uh. Um. Vivi- uh, Vivillon is oh, also back with a fancy pattern uh pattern wing variation bug type. Pokemon had 20 different variations in X and Y, depending on the geographic location of the 3DS. In order to catch them all, you have to trade with friends around the world. It seems likely that this mechanic will make a comeback for the Switch generation. That's a cute little butterfly thing. Yes. And uh, it's cool that they're retaining the, uh, it looks different in every country from the original. Yeah, I like that. I like when they have region uh, uh, variants. I don't. Why because not? Because what if it... What if, like, France has a better-looking Pokemon than the U.S.? I don't know anybody in France. And I don't want to, like, meet anybody in France. Oh, wait, you mean, literally, you mean literally other regions have different... Yes. No, I, yes. I'm talking about how, like, the yes. Alolan region Pokemon. That's what I'm talking about. See, this the way this was written, yeah, depending on the geographical region of the 3DS. Oh, so I did, that, okay. That says to me, depending on where you're, depending on where you are at the time no, of you're playing right. the game, that's the Pokemon that determines the design of the Pokemon. Oh, so it's just this this specific Pokemon has different wing pattern depending on literally 
what region you're playing the game in. I, yeah. I thought it was like the Alolan variant of freaking, you know, yeah, a certain Pokemon. Uh, mm-hmm. Like, like Tauros has a region variant. Right. That, that, that is specific it, to Scarlet and Violet. Tauros yeah, it, looks it, like this now in this game. That's an in-game region variant. Yeah, yeah. but then that, now this this butterfly guy has a, has an out of game real world region variant. That's a little yeah. weird, but uh, that could be cool. Make a friend in France, Will, if you want the yeah. France uh, one. That could be cool. Uh, it's put you outside your comfort zone a little bit. You got to join a four. Okay. Uh, bonjour. Wee uh, wee. <laughs> Wine. Okay. Uh, one of the week reposting. Uh, our accounts also showed off an in-game cinematic, which prominently featured two parakeet Pokemon from Scarlet and Violet. Uh, With and yeah. weird hair. Yes. Oh, of course they got weird hair. Uh, okay. So, yeah, and that's it. Those are all the major leaks. That's kind of cool. We got some cool-looking, interesting Pokemon. Uh, yeah. A little disappointed in the mid-tier uh, evolution of Fue Coco, but I mean, obviously, they're always going to be weird-looking. So Yeah. I guess this one's just a little bit of a bigger disappointment because it's literally just wearing a hat. <laughs> we usually don't like to report on leaks if uh, there's two there's, there's two criteria whether we're going to report on a leak. First one is how credible we think it is. Mm-hmm. A lot of times there are leaks where it's just like who like it's it it's very clearly like like somebody could have just doctored it up but this seems pretty legit yeah um, and the other one is how big of a deal it is sometimes there's something that's people are 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 just talking about and you just even if you don't think it's real you have to just at least acknowledge it um, yeah this kind of had an overlap between the two it looks real and uh people are talking about it so we had to talk about it um but there's some actual Pokemon news too that the Pokemon company yes. wants you to hear. They uh, posted a trailer today. They made a big deal about this trailer, and then they dropped it. And then everyone's like, "What the fuck? Why did I get up early for for this? <laughs> yeah. This was stupid." So uh, here it is. Is this the one that I we're, we're talking about? Paul Scarlet Violet teases two new Pokemon in the latest trailer. Yeah. The latest Pokemon Scarlet and Violet trailer uh, has just dropped, and it's definitely a celebratory one, featuring Ed Sheeran's brand new song "Celestial," um, and showcasing multiple Pokemon places and people we're uh, already met. Uh, sorry, and people we've already met. Uh, it feels like we're finally in the home stretch. Uh, there wasn't a ton of new details here, except the Pokemon company Game Freak managed to say something with not very much at around the two minute and thirty second mark. We got a shot of Arven and your Pokemon trainer looking at a rather elaborate sketch of what looks like a Dawn fan, the evolution of Fan P. Uh, though it's looking <laughs> le- a little different. I like uh, the you, trailer you pronounce Pokemon names. It's you know, it it, it sounds stupider and stupider. <laughs> it sounds like trying to explain how Mastodon works. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, though it looks a Wait, little the, different. The, the Twitter the sp- alternative? Yes. <laughs> ha- do you have one? Yeah. And it's 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 uh, somebody compared mass uh switching from Twitter to Mastodon like switching from Windows to Linux. Oh no. It's exactly the same. So, so what's so what's your what's your Mastodon pl- plug it right w- now? Will Wolf, damn it. Same oh, as okay. everything. Good luck finding me. <laughs> <laughs> Still don't know how that works. Anywho. Uh, the trailer then cuts to a close-up of, a, of what looks like a hulking Pokemon closely matching the sketch. The trailer again cuts back to the sketchbook with a different kind of Don fan sketch. Uh, what's going on here? Then we get to see a much more futuristic looking one in the flesh, presumably just its face. That past and future theming uh, seems ever so likely now. Uh, does this trailer elaborate? No, but the official website does. Um, the more ancient looking creature is known as a great tusk exclusive to Scarlet and the metallic one is known as iron treads exclusive to violet unusual names for Pokemon. We think because I can pronounce them. Um, (laughs) Arven is holding a book in the trailer and the book will depend on what version of the game you have. You'll get the Scarlet book in Scarlet and the violet book in violet. Duh. These Yo, books the Mega contain... Man Pokemon looks sick, though. <laughs> These books contain sketches and photos of Great Tusk, Iron 
treads, and various other unidentified creatures. Look at this Mega Man, dude. He looks so good. Let me see. I need oh, that. yeah. Does that mean I need yeah. Scarlet? No, no, Violet. I think I need Violet yeah. for the sword Mega Man guy. I need that. That's I'm rocking him. That also, cool. also, people like the giraffe guy. In his <laughs> evolution, he gets like a little hood. Yeah. He literally evolves. Oh, they show the evolution. He's like a regular giraffe, and then he evolves. So he has like a tail. Can I get to that part? I need to show you this. So he has he has a face on his tail, and his mm-hmm. head is that of a giraffe. And then he evolves, and his head comes out his own ass through the tail, and now he's wearing his tail. Oh, jeez. As like a hat. So he's a little wacky. So at least they showed that. Oh, and they show yeah. they show a little bit of uh, trading the two Mega Mans. So like, oh. they, because they know you're going to have a friend who has Scarlet and a friend who has Violet, and you're going to tr- want to trade the, the Mega Mans. Yeah. Because they know that one's going to be a cool one. So that's kind of cool. That's exciting. I'm, I'm happy that they showed that. But did you see what the food looked like? It looked like absolute no. shit. It looks like fucking garbage. <laughs> Look at this. It looks like The Sims 3. That looks like Cooking Mama from like at least three generations ago. <laughs> yeah, that that's not, not great. Yeah. Uh, Otherwise, it's just rapid fire, other stuff that we've probably already heard of already. Yeah. Uh, oh, there's the there's the sketch of the of, of the mammoth man and the steel yeah. guy for no reason. There's zero context <laughs> at all. They just show him. Oh, and then there's the Gaba Ghoul, the Gimme Ghoul. <laughs> we didn't talk about Gimme Ghoul. That was announced no. like two days ago. They just dropped him on Twitter. Uh, not a single Gaba Ghoul joke on Twitter. I don't think that's as well known as people think it is. Like when The Sopranos was on TV, yes, but The Sopranos has not been on TV for like twenty years at this point. I also couldn't think of a good joke. Yeah, his name's Gimme Ghoul. Obviously, obviously, take on Gobble Ghoul. It's gotta be. Yeah, but uh, I had I had no I had no good I had no good play on words there. <laughs> uh, although I, I think this game. I mean, I, I like some of the stuff I'm seeing in this trailer, but otherwise, it just looks like it's like it's it's ten years old. It 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 doesn't. Yeah, it, it something's missing here, and it's and and it's like, and it's ten years of development. <laughs> like I can sort of get behind like a a simpler, more like you know easy easier to use um, aesthetic mm-hmm. for a game. Like it doesn't have to be realistic looking. It doesn't have to be, you know, Unreal Engine five or whatever. But there's there's limits to that, and this definitely does seem like it's stuck on tech from like three generations ago. Yeah, I, I would love to see a trailer where they go over uh, s- some of the stuff you can do in the game, some of some of the technical yeah. breakdowns, because they already did something like that. But it felt like I was getting no information. They said a lot of stuff. And I felt like yeah. I barely learned anything anyway. I need some quality of life changes, like the ability to skip through some text. Uh, I, when I play this game, because I'm going to, mm-hmm. a lot of people think I shouldn't because I just don't like Pokemon anymore. But uh, I'm going to because I'm the actually content. a little excited. I'm a little excited to try it. Um, I've given up on playing games for the content. I'm, I'm only playing <laughs> from now on. I'm only playing games that I actually want to play. Um but when I play this game, I'm going to take notes because every time I play a Pokemon game, I hate I hate it, and there's a lot of little things that bother me, and then mm-hmm. I have a hard time explaining all of the little things that bother me. I just it's just a lot of like weird user experience decisions that that all together make for a terrible time. So right. I need to take notes so that when I come back to do this podcast i could uh explain exactly why i feel the way that i do about pokemon and i assume you're just not even gonna bother no nah, probably not <laughs> um but like who knows maybe you know if the reception to this is better than it has been for sword and shield i'll look into it i do think that the game 
is in desperate need of like quality of life improvements. Right. There's still a lot of grinding in that game. There's still a lot of like weird uh, issues with like Pokemon leveling up and like when you acquire certain Pokemon and you know, I just feel like that whole experience can be streamlined a lot better. Yeah. Uh, I did. I did see in the last trailer, I think, you know, when you like, finish a battle and you gain xp and it like gives you it like goes to the breakdown of all the xp like one at a time it's super annoying you wish you could just skip it yeah apparently it does it all at once it doesn't go <laughs> through it just don't go goes and that yeah. is the type of shit that i want to see that's the shit yeah. i want to see in the trailer where i'm like yeah, give me more of that but uh yeah i'll just wait and see and play it otherwise uh i saw a uh I saw Nintendo Life made a video about their hands-on. A couple of content creators, I think a week ago or a week and a half ago, got a hands-on the game and they made little videos about it. They couldn't capture any footage. So it was just uh-huh. them talking about their experiences. And the Nintendo Life guy said it was very rough. And you can tell by the way he was talking about it. He knew he was going to get shit for saying that it was rough. But yeah. he was like... Listen, man, frame rate was all over the place. It was technically like a little broken. Uh, I wish yeah. they, hopefully they could fix, they could patch some stuff before the game comes out. And I mean, people aren't really playing Pokemon for its technical, you know, capabilities. But uh, no, it is still but, a little concerning given the the magnitude of this franchise. Yeah, you would think, you know, there would be some someone at Game Freak and the Pokemon company is like, we need to like, we need certain level quality for this game that we have not been hitting yeah exactly uh bob your mic volume is low compared to wills okay uh i will raise it ah hello i'll also raise will uh, i'll lower will a little bit okay just saying good night to my daughter good night <laughs> good night um one more last pokemon situation Yes. Uh, we have here Pokemon Scarlet and Violet confirms Eevee and Charizard for first Terror Raid battles. Ooh, I read that as Terror Raid, and I thought, man, they really are stuck in the past if they're getting Terror Raid in this game. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Eevee looks we are, sick. Yeah. Uh, we have received yet another trailer for Scarlet and Violet. While on the surface, it may appear to be nothing more than an elaborate music video. For the Ed Sheeran track, uh, Celestial, get that Ed Sheeran money, man, let me tell you. Uh, it appears that there was more information bubbling under the surface than initially met the eye. Apart from teasing the presence of two new Pokemon, the trailer also provided a closer look at the Terra Raid battles. I'm going to screw that up. Uh, now, with the help of the game's official site, the Pokemon Company confirmed that the first uh, terrest- uh, Terrestal- ter- ter- Terrestrial Terrestrial no. Terrestrial? No, no, Where? that's what tripped me up. Where are you exactly? Uh, second paragraph, second line. The Pokemon Company has confirmed the first terras terrestrialized terrestrialized. No, wait, wait, huh? wait. C- come back. Do it with me. Terrestrialized, terrestrialized yes. Mon, who will be <laughs> up uh, for catching uh, when the game is released on. November 18th. No one I will know, call this terrestrialized. People I are going to just call it crystal Pokemon. I know uh, Nintendo Life is in is European, but like, fuck it, come on, man. <laughs> what? You mean Help with me. the date? With, no, with like, be- terrestrialized is not a word. No, it's it's and a Pokemon it, word. It's it's the the in the game. Yes, it, it, when they're crystal poke when they're crystallized, they're not crystallized. They're terrestrialized, and the only reason why I know how to pronounce that is because they said it in an older trailer. It okay, is so, it is stupid. I would have right, never so known how to pronounce it otherwise. Part of my quality of life um, issues with Pokemon is that they have stupid names for everything, yes. <laughs> and that they're all hard to pronounce. So, so if they so, fix that. As well, uh, I might jump back. On that. the last Nintendo podcast, we did a, a, a Smasher Pass Pokemon, uh-huh. and Jackson got a lot of shit for claiming that he's a big Pokemon fan and then pronouncing Pokemon names wrong. <laughs> and I said, "How can you pronounce Pokemon names wrong? They're made up." Yeah, <laughs> like I understand. Like, listen, Pikachu. 
that is no they're made up and there's no voice acting in the game so something yeah. like pikachu like everybody knows how to pronounce pikachu pikachu has been said so many times but like any of these new pokemon that we've literally never heard spoken before yeah and it's not like the anime is i mean it's still on tv relevant but like, yeah exactly <laughs> So and even the anime, they could pronounce it differently depending on what region you're watching yeah. it. Yeah. So, so most of the time, these Pokemon are only going to be written written form, and yeah. and they're named things that are purposely like mashes of words that already are tongue twisters. Don't make any sense. So give yeah. people a break here. Also, terrestrialize is stupid. Yeah. The first uh, Terror Raid battle will uh, will be titled the Eevee Spotlight and will star Eevee. Running yeah. from the 24th to the 27th of November, the event will see the little type uh, hopping Pokemon appear- appearing more frequently in the battles in a, a variety of Terra types. Uh, you will be able to team up and take on the terrestrialized form <laughs> to find the perfect type for you. Uh, the Pokemon Company also announced the key player in the second uh, Terra Raid Battle Spotlight. Everyone's favorite Dragon Boy, Charizard, uh, will take the limelight first between December 1st and the 4th, and then again on December 15th to 16th in Black Crystal Terra Raid Battles. Uh, these will appear different. Uh, these will appear different to regular Terra Raid Battles due to them taking place inside a Black Crystal. This Charizard will have a Dragon Terra type and will be and will come brandishing the mightiest mark, a sign of a Pokemon caught in a seven star Terra raid battle. The Pokemon Company has provided a little more info on this limited uh, time catchable, which you can find below. I uh, I'm a little so uh, I think Charizard looks sick. Yes. Also, here's a regular old Eevee. But there's a grass type, a fire type, and a water type. Uh huh. That's kind of cool. So, so what's the difference between a regular Pokemon type and a terrestrialized type? Do they just uh, when they're terrestrialized, they just get given a type? I think terrestrialized, like it's like they become more crystallized, judging from the pictures, yeah. at least. Yeah, yeah, I know. Uh, but, 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 what's the? How does it get a type? Because it's a, an Eevee is a normal type Pokemon, and then you just give it. You're just giving it. A type when it's terrestrialized. Well, let's see what it says about Charizard. Charizard cannot normally be encountered in Paldea, and the Charizard appearing during this event has Dragon as its Terra type, making it a formidable oh. foe and a powerful ally. It will also use a devastatingly powerful moves in battle, so defeating it by yourself will be extremely difficult. Team up with family, friends, and trainers around the world uh, to take it on together. So it sounds like when a Pokemon is terrestrialized, its type changes to something different. K Jack in the chat says they change types when crystal form. Okay. I was going to say, does this mean it's fire and dragon? That's pretty crazy. And it looks like it might just be dragon. It might just be dragon. Uh, also, I'm looking at this. Zero chance you will get a screenshot like this of this screen at home when you're playing the game. The bit rate <laughs> is not going to look like this when you're when yeah. you're playing the game. That'd be insane. There's so many particles going on and stuff and you're playing on a switch. Yeah. So I'd be shocked if you unless, can get a, a picture like this. Unless that's a pre-rendered cutscene and you, you can hit the capture button as the cutscene's playing. Okay, maybe. I'll give you that. But, well, yeah. you know what? I'm thinking of, like, video capturing. Because, like, a video capture, you're going to get all the particles from the from the, yeah. from the crushed bit, right? I guess if it... Well, no, because there's particles. Well, uh, yeah, if it's pre-rendered. You're right. You're right. You're right. Yeah. Those don't look like particles. Those just look like textures on a plane. <laughs> okay, that could be it, too. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. They're, they're, they're in different str- streaks. That could be it, too. Yeah. Okay. All right. You're all making sense. Right. You're all making sense. Uh, these th- these look cool, and it's happening in December. Yeah, December first yes. to the fourth, and fifteenth to the sixteenth. So, yes, those are your first big Pokemon events for the big new Pokemon that you're gonna play with your friends. And you know what? We still don't know how you play with your friends. <laughs> Game comes out like what next week, and we still don't know how it's yeah. gonna work. 
there's I I saw uh some people talking about it and it kind of makes sense how it might work. Uh, but I'd like to hear it. I like to see it. I want to see it in action. And that's yeah. again, something we don't see from any of these trailers is actually playing with friends. We see like weird, like slices of playing with friends where like you're walking around the town and like, that's it. You don't see them like capturing Pokemon or anything or doing a battle. So, and well, you do see the terrestrialized fights, but that's mm-hmm. not any different from the, uh, embiggened fights of the last Pokemon game. Yeah. Oh, anyway, that's it for Pokemon news. We're done here. That's all the Pokemon <laughs> all right. we can we can muster for for yeah. one day. <clears throat> it's a lot. It's a lot. And reading that sometimes reminds me of how I must sound like to my wife when I try to explain a uh, Crisis on Infinite Earth. So, yes. Hannah has been living with me for one day, and she's gotten she are like when she asks me questions. So how does this work? I'll be like, well, and then she goes, oh no. <laughs> she goes never mind (laughs) so my daughter finally got into her first comic book it is uh Mm -hmm. superman rebirth number one um and not only did i forget that that book features uh john kent superman's son incinerating the family cat with his heat vision i i remember that (laughs) so i gotta explain that to everybody but it's also very continuity heavy i have to explain that this is the Superman from the pre-Flashpoint era who's now on the current Earth, and the old Superman has passed away, and the, the old Superman, who's now the new Superman, is taking over for uh, the, that world Superman, and the Eradicator comes back, but he's is from the death of Superman, which is even longer ago. It's They need me, is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> they can't get rid of me. <laughs> I was over your house for two seconds, and she ran up to me and Dad and, and said... Something about Superman killing a cat. <laughs> she she refers to it as the John book because she knows John Kent as the main character. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, so why that book though? I do, I got her because she was playing with my Superman toy. So I said, no, you got to get your own Superman toy. <laughs> so I bought her. McFarlane makes they're called Page Punchers. They're these little stupid action figures that come with a comic book. So I figure I'll just get that because it's cheap and it kills two birds with one stone. And she she got into the comic book. So interesting. There you go. And it's a regular comic book. It's not one specifically made for that. It's it was it's a reprint of a comic that came out before. You know, wow. they t- there's different ads in it, but it, yeah, it's it's the same comic. Interesting. Yeah. Uh. So, okay. I'm reading notifications. I got yeah. Rusty Tull who gifted a sub to Wolf Den Dad. Thanks, dude. He appreciates and, and, and Wolf Den Dad has now been subscribed for four months. <laughs> there you go. Uh, Luabic, thanks for the 17 months. Hopefully the podcast fills the void left in my heart from this breakup. Who broke up? Ooh, who? You? Luabic? You didn't oh, need him anyway. Who Who would leave you? Who would leave Luabic? Seriously. You didn't need him anyway. Fuck him. Yeah. What do you need them for? You got video yeah. games. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Call of Duty's Warzone 2 is coming out soon. Girls uh, come and go. MMOs are forever. <laughs> <laughs> Lucifer's friend, thank you for the six months. I had a guy come over today to measure the windows. Yeah. And the first thing he says is, yeah, so uh, my PlayStation 5 da- died. The uh, the uh, it's got the blue light uh, flickering thing. Oh. Uh, and he talked about that. This is like eight in the morning. He talked about that for like 20 minutes. And I was like, oh, wow, that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I like, could barely breathe. Yeah. <laughs> um. Anyway, we need to talk about this other big news that is big to me. I don't know how many other people in chat it's going to be big news to. I'm going to make a whole ass video on this when I finally get it in my hands. But I'm pissed off. I'll talk about... I put Retro Dodo's article in here because I couldn't find an article on the actual thing. But here's Retro Dodo talking. Retroid Pocket 3S Plus handheld could be a more powerful edition coming in 2023. Well, if this yes. sounds familiar to you, that's because... The Retroid Pocket 3 literally just fucking came out. I was going to ask. <laughs> and they are coming out with the three plus this was a rumor that they're reporting on that ended up being true but they were erroneously called it the three s 
and it's actually just the three plus. Right. Well, I know it's the three he... S plus. Yes. Yes, but it's just the three plus. Uh, Retro Dodo says, I know what you're thinking. Brandon, I only just got a hold of Retroid Pocket 3 now. now. Now there's rumors of a new upgraded version. It could possibly be true, but the rumors come from a Chinese forum and not from Go Retroid's mouth. <gasps> they did now. Uh, so please take this information with a grain of salt. Don't take it with a grain of salt. Swallow it whole. Uh, the Retroid Pocket 3 was released to the public in early September of 2022. Literally two goddamn months ago. Uh, so not so long ago, really. And since then, not only have they revealed new Retroid Pocket 3 colors. I didn't see. Hold on, let me see these colors. I didn't know that. Oh, yeah, I did. There's, oh, there's a there's an atomic oh, yeah, purple. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's an atomic purple. There you go. Purple. Now you're talking my language. Uh, but there's also been some rumors that a new version of the device is in the works. And guess what? It is. According to Chinese forum, users have been sharing information about a leak of an image revealing not one, but two new handhelds. Oh, no. That go by the name of Retroid Pocket 3S and Retroid Pocket 3S Plus. Oh, God help me. Does that mean there's another one? These devices are near identical to the original Retroid Pocket 3, but be but come with some major internal differences that could take this device to the next level. Let me pause here and explain to the chat if you're if you're new here. Hi, how you doing? My name is Bob. That's Will over there. Hi. I voted. <laughs> so on my main channel, on the Wolf Den channel, sometimes I like to talk about little portable emulators, little portable devices that usually run on Android or Linux that you can put uh, retro games onto. You can play ROMs from them. The Retroid Pocket 3 was one of my favorites recently. It is an Android device. You could put a whole bunch of emulators on it. It could play all the way up to GameCube, and it played pretty damn good. And it was pretty cheap, too. So it was pretty. It was a pretty good device. It was one of my favorites. I liked it. Almost immediately broke. After I made the video, almost immediately broke. I think I can fix it. I haven't tried it yet. Um, the rumor about the Retroid Pocket 3 was that it was sitting in a warehouse for, I think, two years. And they had to just move shipments. And they didn't fix any of the problems that they had with it. They just decided, fuck it, we got to move them. So there were a lot of manufacturing issues with the Retroid Pocket 3. They just decided, screw it, we got to get them out the door. So at first, I thought, I made the whole video. I was like, this is great. My Retroid Pocket 3 doesn't really have any problems. It's it's a great device. Then the 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 home button just got stuck and is and is, is stuck in the on in the down position. So I have to fix it. It's it's and their their uh, support is abysmal. Um. Their, their response was just solder a new button on there. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, now, so that just came out. That whole thing, just that, that whole mess happened in September. Uh, and now there's rumors of a new one and uh, the rumors are true. The Retroid Pocket 3S is rumored to have the same shell buttons and layout of the Retroid Pocket 3, but instead it will rock a very powerful MediaTek Dimensity 900 chipset. CPU is strong enough to potentially emulate best P the best PS2 games and the best GameCube games. All right, so it did Ooh. have a little trouble with GameCube, and it had a lot of trouble with PS2. Uh, right. Something even the G Cloud cannot do. The G Cloud can't do PS2 that good, but it does it pretty good. Okay. Um. I'm not reading all this. I want to read about the plus. The plus is rumored to be a little different. This leaked image shows no visuals of the device. And that's because it will potentially to feature a slightly larger screen. <coughs> Traditionally, the RP3 has a 4.7 inch display, but the S, but the 3S plus could go, in fact, go as far as 5.5 1080p display. Oh, I didn't know about this. I'm I'm getting pissed off again. <laughs> this will directly compete with the Ein Odin if priced around the two hundred dollar mark, and if mass produced, it will likely leave Ein in the dust with the struggle to ship all of their units out due to long manufacturing times. Excuse me. Mm. The Ein Odin is currently my favorite portable emulator. It's three hundred dollars, which is pretty expensive, but it emulates yeah. everything very well, even PlayStation Two. Okay, and it's pretty much impossible to get one. 
which is another problem. Yeah. Uh, so it makes sense for Retroid to go after that market and try to try to make one that's more in that price range so it can be more powerful. Yeah. Uh, anyway, it's a great idea for Ret- for Go Retroid and they can see specs work on the uh, they can see the specs work on the market already, but leaving it but having it leak this early into the threes lifespan isn't going to help them with Christmas sales as many will read the news and hold out until deeper into 2023. That's sad mm-hmm. because they ret, uh, retro dodo the people who wrote this article thought that these rumors meant that this was going to come out in 2023 yeah. little did they know they said fuck it we're releasing it now update yeah. as of the 4th of november it has been officially revealed by go retroid that they are working on a retroid pocket 3 plus they revealed it through a trailer on youtube channel which you can see below and it leaks it and if the leaks were trust, same shell, new chip, uh, were true. Okay. <coughs> Sorry. <laughs> anyway, uh, there's a new, uh, yeah, I have another link here. This is the Retroid Pocket 3 Plus. It went up for pre-order Ooh. today, and I pre-ordered one, and I'm mad about it, because I literally just fucking bought the regular Retroid Pocket 3, and I got it two months ago. Yeah. So I just literally bought another one, and the reason why they did this is because they had them, they had shipments just sitting on the shelves for the Retroid Pocket Three. They knew it was a hunk of garbage. <laughs> it was a decent handheld that had a lot of manufacturing issues. Instead of reworking it, they decided we needed to get them out the door. They got them out the door, and then immediately decided to try to make a new one. So. Anyway, here's their fix. It's 150 goddamn dollars. Uh, <laughs> but if you purchase, don't worry, Will. They're gonna do you a solid. If you purchase a oh. Retroid Pocket Three, just like I did, 25 bucks off. The 150 dollar oh. purchase, 25 bucks off. Oh, gee, thank you. Well, 25 bucks off for the first 1,000 yes. Retroid Pocket Three buyers. Yes. And luckily, I was within one of the first 1,000. Okay. And then every, for everyone, you get five bucks off. Here you go, have five yeah. bucks off. There you go. Here's five bucks. Retroid does a kind of cool thing where they will give. They, they will also sell an upgrade kit. So if yeah, you just want that... the internals, they'll give you an upgrade kit, which is kind of cool. Yeah. But eighty five dollars is still a lot because the console itself costs one hundred and fifty dollars. The old one yeah. <clears throat> that I bought costs one hundred and thirty dollars. The one that I ended up getting. Uh huh. So for a couple more dollars, I can get a whole ass other device so that I don't have to put together myself. So yeah, it kind of, I, I, I appreciate that they do the upgrade kit, but I do wish the upgrade was a lot cheaper. Now I'm going to be even more mad if they decide to make a whole other version of this. Because if those leaks were true, that means there's another one that they're going to come out with. I, I, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if they did. These things come out fast and furious. It's like every Mm -hmm. other month there's a new one and it's usually from the same three companies. So yeah, this is what it should have been. This is what the Retroid Pocket 3 should have been. The problem is I really liked the Retroid Pocket 3 and when I reviewed it, I gave it really good reviews. Right. I didn't know it was going to break the neck the very next week. But I'm excited to make a video on this because I will shit all over that whole <laughs> business model. I'm going to like this yeah. a lot is the problem. I'm going to like it. But I, I don't like that I had to that I had to buy it. I don't like that yeah. I had to buy it when I just literally bought one. And I liked the one that I had. It just fucking broke for no reason. <sighs> anyway, people in the Ooh. chat are bringing up Ambernick. I used to really like Ambernick. They're a similar company that made similar stuff. Yeah, They released a couple of duds this year. They were... Like a year ago, they were like my favorite. Uh, But this year, they released a couple of duds. And they just released one that I hear is very good. I just am in over my head with all these fucking devices. So I I didn't get that one. Um, I'm waiting for Amberdick to come out with something that's like vastly different than uh, some of the stuff that I've already had. Mm -hmm. Um, So yeah, uh, that's the big 
portable emulation controversy is that Retroid, which is a company that I actually liked, uh, just burned me really bad, and a lot of other a lot of other uh, customers they burned us all really bad, and uh, I'm very disappointed in them. But if you didn't buy a Retroid, this is gonna be a pretty good device. Yeah, just be prepared for it to immediately be out of date. Yeah, it's it's funny. Like you know, there's always that one person who says like. Oh, why buy the new iPhone when in two months there's just going to be another new iPhone? Not really understanding how like technology like works, like yeah. the life cycle of technology. This is that like in actuality. Yeah. This is what that person has been warning for. No, it's true. Yeah. So, luckily, it's Android based, so like you could just update it, and like, yeah, most stuff will still work good. It's the the problem is that this will be significantly more powerful than the last one. Yeah. So the last one played GameCube games kind of good. This one will, should be able to play them just like, like really good. So yeah, uh, I'm, I'm very disappointed. Again, I have the Ein Odin. I'll just fucking play games on there. They haven't burned me. They released one console. Well, they released a bunch of different, like it, a, they released a line of consoles at once. Right. And then they shut the fuck up. For like a year. Yeah. And that's the way you should do it. Anyway, do we thank Lucifer's friend for six months? Well, thank uh, you. We did. Yeah. Uh, okay. That's the end of my rant. What other news mm-hmm. do we have? Uh, pre-order for the PSVR, PSVR 2 headset games and sense controllers is coming later this month. And we now have an official release date and price. Oh, oh, God. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the PSVR 2 is officially launching on February 22nd, 2023. The PSVR Sense Controller Charging Station, designed specifically for the PSVR 2 Sense Controller, will also <laughs> launch the same day. Are you ready? <laughs> the PlayStation VR 2 will launch for $549.99 US dollars, uh, $599 euros 529 british pounds and 74,980 yen that, that's, that's just for that's just for the headset and the controllers that's a lot so that the, the, the big the big joke is the psvr 2 headset and controllers costs more than a playstation 5 so the original playstation vr cost as much as a PlayStation 4. Unless you right. got the controllers with it, then it costs even more than that. So, right. It seems to me like they tried to make this cost as much as a PlayStation 5 and they couldn't do it, so they had to charge the extra 50 bucks, but also they're raising the prices of the PlayStation 5. True. So, I think this will end up costing the same amount as a PlayStation 5. Well, they're also going to have a bundle with uh, Horizon Call of the Mountain, which comes uh-huh. with the headset, uh, the controllers, and the game. Um, and that will be $600 American, 650 euros, uh, 570 pounds, and uh, 79,980 yen. So if you want a game with it, it's even more money. <laughs> All right, you know what? That's not too bad. Save save twenty bucks on the game. True, uh, and the and the controller charging station is fifty bucks. <laughs> Wait, Horizon Call of the Mountain is a different game than I know. That is that specifically a VR game? Yes, it's a so, VR exclusive game. Yeah. So how much is that on its own? I don't know. I think it's. I think it's cheaper than a regular full release right it better be fifty dollars <laughs> yeah <laughs> at, at least yeah um i don't think it has a price yeah okay so it'll be at least fifty dollars probably yeah uh, so i oh it comes with oh you can get a little stand a little charge station that's cool i have a charge station for my yeah. oculus and i wouldn't you kind of need a charge stand for 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 a vr headset because where do you put it you know uh well 
this is specifically just for the controllers. Oh, because the headset has to be plugged in. I forgot. Yeah. Uh, players could charge the PSVR 2 says controller through a simple click in design without having to, ne- to connect to the PS5 console, which frees up the console's USB ports. That's cool. Um, yeah. So I know that the PlayStation VR 2 is supposed to have like a lot of technology and it's supposed to be a very like um, a high resolution headset and it's got a lot of other like tracking technology and stuff that makes it a uh, more premium VR experience. Mm-hmm. I'll be fucking getting it. Uh, uh, I'm not happy about that either because uh, it's going to end up it's- just like my PSVR 1. It's going to just sit yeah. and collect dust at when I'm done with it. And that's $600 right down the toilet <laughs> I, I will say though that the original playstation vr uh was a great uh entry into vr because at the time yeah. vr was like hard to get into and the playstation vr seemed to be the easiest way to get into it and the playstation vr headset was not the best but it was the most accessible and that made it a very good option yeah. So this will be a more accessible way to get a really high quality headset, which I'm interested in. The Oculus well, Quest 2 is really good, but supposedly would, this will be higher resolution and stuff. So I'm I was going to say, because like the Oculus Quest or the Meta Quest now, that's completely wireless. Yeah. You don't have to hook it up to anything. It's all self-contained and it's cheaper than this. And for most people, I would say a majority of people, that's good enough. That gives them the VR experience that they want. Yeah. The the PSVR 2 is trying to go for the same market as uh, the HTC Vive and like more high end uh, VR headsets, whereas the PlayStation VR 1 is what the is what the meta quest is now the entry level one right but i don't know I, like vr is still very much like a niche thing yeah i like guess more accessible now than ever but like the high end stuff is really only for like the high you know the high end enthusiasts who could afford this kind of stuff i don't know if this is going to turn out the way sony wants it to i don't think this is going to be as successful as i think it's going to I'm, yeah. I don't. I I hope it does well for them. I hope it does exactly as much. Like it sells exactly as much as they project. Um, but yeah, I don't think it's. I don't think it's going to catch on the way that they that. that I don't think it's going to catch on that well. I, I yeah. hope that they're not making too many of these. Um, yeah. I I think that they're kind of making this because they see other companies getting into VR and hyping up VR and stuff, and they already have people work on vr stuff so they it's it's a i think it's kind of safe to be in that space especially as a big video game company Mm -hmm. uh so it makes sense but their best place is in the entry level of vr I know that the PlayStation 5 is really powerful, so they have the ability to make something really powerful, but they should have shaved at least make it $500. $550 is pushing it. Um, And yeah, I do like the MetaQuest 2. uh, I I, I think having it wireless is incredible. And that's, I think that's the best way to play VR. It might not be the the most. it might not be the most immersive because you don't have the resolution, uh, but not having any wires and and literally nothing else to hook up to, you literally just put the headset on and turn it on, and then you're ready to go. Right. The, the ease of use is 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 unmatched. They need to capture some of that as much as they can, but I don't know how much they can because you got to plug it in. Yeah. Uh, the the only I'm, reason I'm interested in this is because of the 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 heightened resolution because resolution does matter when you're trying to be immersed in something. Yeah. Um but even still, you know, I've I played the Quest 2, I played Resident Evil 4 on it, I played Beat Saber on it, I played a lot of stuff on it. Immersion immersion wasn't really broken. Yeah. It was it was good. It was fine. It was fun. And I think I think we've gotten to the point where people can make, you know, lower resolution vr 
still good. Yeah. And I think for most people, that's fine. They don't necessarily want to spend 600. The, the system's like what? 500? Yes. Five, so like $1,100 to play VR. Yeah. People don't want to do that. Well, I mean, uh, their market is probably people who have bought the PS5 and have had it already for a while. So like it's not like they're making yeah. one big purchase. Um, but I mean, I'm sure there will be, be people who do that and hopefully they make a bundle, but they can't even produce enough PS5s. So how are they going to yeah. make a bundle? And exactly. they're ra- going to be raising the price of the PS5. They raised it in other regions. They're going to raise it in America eventually. Yeah. Um, compare it to the new $1,500 quest yet. Yeah, no, <laughs> <laughs> there is a new $1,500 quest, which is like, you know, that's like a pro that's- level one. That's not like the, uh, like the the quest to wait it, is it called a quest? I don't think it's called a quest. Well, I mean that's what the PS5 VR is like trying to compete with, the, like the high end stuff. Yeah, there's like a new high market. end meta yeah. headset, but I don't think it's called the quest, quest Pro. Mm-hmm. That's what it is. Uh, meta Quest Pro. Uh, yeah, this is going after like the, the Quest Two. <laughs> it's like the next level Quest Two situation. Yeah. Uh, I guess if there's a Quest Three, that's where this PlayStation VR would 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 sit. The Quest Pro better be way better than this PlayStation yeah. VR headset, <laughs> or else why? What is even the point? Can the Quest Pro be? Does it have its own like processor and stuff? I think it does. I think so. Yeah, I mean that's worth fifteen hundred right there. If they put a whole ass PS5 in the headset, then yeah, yeah, dude, then that's fine. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I I mean, I'm definitely not getting a Quest Pro unless they want to give me one, which would be sick. <laughs> uh, I will get the PlayStation VR because that's at least a little more accessible. Quest Pro has its own processor and processor in the controllers. That is Ooh. interesting. Interesting indeed. Uh, all right. So there's that. Uh, and so, so are the... Later this month. Okay. I hate when they do that. I hate when they announce when pre-orders are because then I have to be aware, you know? Yeah. Then you have to just sit there and like... Yeah. Just let me... Yeah. Just surprise me. <laughs> um, whoa. I want to say Game Journey like for 17 months. Hey, Wolf Bros. Joined a little late and hope you're enjoying the new home, Bob. I was hoping to get your first impression on the 8 Ultimate Controller. It looks great, but what do you think? Enjoy the Prime. Thank you, Game Journey. I'm very late, uh, but I have a video on it coming out on Thursday. I just shot all the B-roll yesterday. Um, it's very cool. The the uh, Ape Do Ultimate uh, controller, the Bluetooth one, which is the Switch yeah. version. There's also a... It's very confusing. We talked about this. Uh, there's the there's one that's Bluetooth and has a 2.4 gigahertz dongle, and that works on the Switch. And then there's just a 2.4 gigahertz one that only works on PC. Yeah. Um, then there's isn't there like an Xbox one? That's as well the one that has the Xbox Legends. Yes. But it doesn't work on Xbox. It only works on PC. Right. Actually, I need to double check that, but it's X input, I, so I'm pretty sure it right. doesn't work on Xbox. It doesn't. It says on the website it doesn't work on Xbox. Okay. But the Switch one, the one that's a Bluetooth and 2.4 gigahertz, can also work on the computer. <laughs> it registers as a Pro controller, though, so it works on. It's just like a Pro controller. The 8-Bit Do Ultimate that is Bluetooth and 2.4 gigahertz works on the PC, but as a Switch controller. It, everywhere it says it's a it's a Switch Pro controller. That's why it doesn't say it works on PC. Right. Over the dongle, it can do X input. It cannot. Uh, wait, no, I haven't tested that. You, you might. I hope you're wrong. That's gonna <laughs> fucking be so annoying. So I went to their website just to double check and make sure that the uh, ultimate controller is not for Xbox and it's not. Uh, but I saw the first thing on their page is a Apidu dual charging dock for Xbox wireless controllers. Pre-order now on Amazon. It is a really fancy transparent charging dock for Xbox controllers. Oh, I thought that was a speaker. No. 
Oh, that's cool. Uh, yeah, it's actually very cool. I was just talking about how the dock for the ultimate controller, which is cool, it comes with a dock. Yeah. The dock's cool, but it is almost an exact replica of the docks that come with an Xbox controller if you buy one of the like Yeah, yeah. one of those docks. This is a much cooler Xbox controller. Yeah, uh, Xbox I would get this. Dock. I mean, I have like stands for all my controllers, but like, I would get this too, just to have it as a stand. Yeah, I hate that you have to change the backs of Xbox controllers. I wish they would just put contact somewhere else, like on the bottom of the controller or something. Yeah. Like, it, it has a USB-C port. Like, just use that. <laughs> um, so, so, like, the, the, the 8-Bit Do Ultimate has a dock that's just like the Xbox dock, but the back of the controllers have contacts. So so you, you don't need to... There are the contacts, right? There are those three little dots. Yeah. So you don't need a battery cover or anything. It just it just charges. And, and you can also charge it through USB-C. So now I have to take the Switch version and plug it in through the dongle and see if it registers as X input. That'd be so wacky and weird. Yeah. Uh, so it seems like the way to go is to just get the fucking Bluetooth one. It seems like it can do a lot more than just, yeah. the, just the... But the other one's cheaper. If you just want it as a PC controller, it's cheaper. Does the dongle that comes with the 8-bit do ultimate switch version work when you plug it into an Xbox? That's the question. And I think no, I've, I don't think any of them work because X input is not the same as uh, Xbox controller input. Yeah, Xbox Be is like a proprietary wireless frequency. Yeah. That they don't really like license out to anyone. I have plugged my 8-bit do arcade stick into an Xbox and that has a dongle. It's the yeah. same exact dongle. And switched it to X input mode and it does not work because it's a different thing. So I don't know. As far as I know, the Bluetooth version of the controller uh, that has the 2.4 gigahertz only registers as a pro controller, even on the computer. I will have to test it plugging in the dongle and making sure that that also registers as a switch controller because I'm not sure. Ah, oh, damn. Damn, I want to see that tested. Maybe a YouTube short. It'll probably end up in, a fuck, in the fucking video. I, I got to do a lot more stuff now. Anyway, uh, there's a lot more news we got to plow through. Uh, Nintendo forms joint venture with DNA. Yes, you all remember DNA, the company that Nintendo kind of bought um, to help them make mobile games that you're all playing because Nintendo made a big push into mobile. Mm-hmm. Nintendo and DNA, the mobile company responsible for helping Nintendo develop Super Mario Run, Mario Kart Tour, uh, Animal Crossing, Pocket Camp, and more, have established a joint venture company called Nintendo Systems. Nintendo announced the news as part of their fiscal year ending March 2023, six months earnings release, and has stated the purpose of this new company will be for research and development as well as operations to strengthen and to strengthen the digitization of Nintendo's business in addition to the creation of value-added services. Nintendo also entrusts DNA with the joint, devel joint development and operation of membership services for various devices. The amount of capital for the joint venture will be greater than 10% of that of Nintendo, so Nintendo systems will become a specified subsidiary of Nintendo. The capital in question is 5 billion yen, or roughly 34 million US dollars. The company will also be located in Tokyo and Nintendo will contribute 80% 80, 80 of the capital. With the, with the integrated hardware software model at the core of its business, Nintendo also strives to provide enhanced experience and service outside of its dedicated gaming system, Nintendo said. In order to provide this experience in a holistic manner, Nintendo is working to maintain and expand its relationship with consumers primarily through Nintendo account. As part of this effort, Nintendo entered a business and capital alliance with DNA in 2015 and has collaborated to develop and operate the new core system centered around Nintendo accounts since then. Based on the, ex the expertise accumulated over the seven plus years and the experience of co-developing multiple services based on Nintendo account, Nintendo, Nintendo and DNA will advance their partnership and establish a joint venture company. 
With the objective to strengthen the digitalization of Nintendo's business, the joint venture company will research and develop, as well as create value-added services to further reinforce Nintendo's relationship with consumers. Okay. So, and this is interesting because, uh, I mean, I'm sure they're... It just seems to us as Nintendo fans that, uh, you know, they're like mobile games are kind of just there we kind of just ignore them like who like we don't need to play them mobily we have the switch we can just play them portably wherever uh but i i could imagine their mobile division is doing insanely well for them yeah so having this kind of uh, uh uh push for mobile stuff uh makes sense for them as a company well, not only that, uh, the big thing this article kept re- uh, repeating was the Nintendo account su- uh, system. Oh, yeah. And that that leads me to believe that this is Nintendo's way of making a Nintendo account, the, n- making the Nintendo account what every other GD account system in the world is now. Same as an Apple account, an Xbox account, a PlayStation uh... account, a Google account, something like that. That's what this is leading me to believe that they're, you know, they see how they finally see how the the rest of the world uh, acts when it comes to having a digital account for a service. And they're like, oh, I guess we should do the same thing. Yeah. So they're working closer with DNA now to 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 fix that that account system. Interesting. Which which I don't want to talk. I don't want to start switch to talk or anything like that. But this could be a step towards the next system because mm-hmm. if there's a one unified account on the next system, then they could trans you could transfer your games and your saves over easier. Hell, you might be able to like do stuff on the computer, link it with Steam, play Switch games on Steam or whatever. And that no, I don't think they're gonna play next yeah, with no. other companies. But, but you know what I mean, like yeah, the things that you can do with other digital services google amazon xbox playstation apple what have you nintendo is taking the steps to start doing that i just want to have my games easily playable on a different device you know exactly and right now it's 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 a pain in the ass to do all that stuff and to transfer stuff over between devices and stuff Mm -hmm. And, and having Having like an app like for, they have a Nintendo Switch Online app and it sucks. Having one like PlayStation and Xbox does is freaking would be awesome. Yeah. And, and and at being able to play like Super Mario Run and having that stuff add to your Nintendo account and stuff and that that would be awesome. So uh, that would be great if if uh, DNA like gets them to fix their shit with their with their Nintendo account and so that the next system. Uh, has a better experience for 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 the account system. Yeah, even just like adding people in a game, like on the Switch, like yeah, every other system, it's very simple and and it's it's built into the system. Nintendo has something similar, but every third party developer ignores their system and makes their own because Nintendo's system is so bad. Imagine connecting your Switch Lite to your Switch like an iPad to an iPhone. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like copy and paste yeah. and stuff back and forth. Exactly yeah, that'd be crazy. Exactly like that, yeah. Game Journey said, just had an idea. Maybe you can trick the Xbox into being compatible with the 8-bit do Ultimate Switch controller with the Mayflash adapter. That wouldn't be tricking it. That would be no. literally just adapting it. Yeah. Like that would totally work. Uh, the Xbox and being compatible with the yeah no that would totally just get it to work that'd be like plugging in a pro controller yeah. to an Xbox with the Mayflash adapter that that would totally work um anyway uh that's cool I'm I'm I'm, I'm glad Nintendo is figuring their shit out and letting other companies help yeah. them figure their shit out yeah uh this is a bit late uh, in the show to talk about Sonic Frontiers but we should probably talk about Sonic Frontiers. We can talk about it real quick. Um, so Bob and I, neither Bob and I have played it. Uh, mm-hmm. We intend to eventually. Bob will probably play it sooner than I will. Mm-hmm. Uh, but 
shock of all shocks, the game is currently sitting at a 72% on Metacritic. Mm -hmm. Now, that is not particularly high. No. But for a Sonic the Hedgehog game, and specifically a Sonic the Hedgehog game that is trying something new and different, I'll take it. <laughs> like, yeah. That's good enough for me. I've seen a lot that's of weird we mixed previews, but yeah. I've seen a lot of good ones. I've seen a lot of yeah. people so, saying good things about it. So, I mean, well, I've seen people saying bad things, but <laughs> yeah, it seems like and, it could have been a lot worse. Yes. The the big things that I'm seeing in all the reviews I'm reading is that it is it's rough around the edges. There's a lot of things that actually do need improvement. Um, some of the new mechanics and the new uh, system doesn't exactly work. Mm -hmm. But people generally seem to be having a good time with this game. There is fun to be had with what Sega is presenting with this new open zone concept for Sonic the Hedgehog. I'm optimistic because like, Sonic Adventure 2 is not really like, and even the original Sonic Adventure, they're not amazing games. They're Those are very rough games, yeah. But I really liked them. Yeah. So I might really like this, even though it's getting only a 72 on Metacritic. Uh, yeah. Stealth tweeted a, a breakdown of all the review scores, and they seem to be kind of all over the place, but they seem there's some giving it a nine out of ten, some giving it an eight out of ten, yeah. some giving it a seven out of ten. So it's like kind of all over the place. Um, yeah. Digital Trends gave it a one out of five, which is kind of harsh, <laughs> but you know, over seven is is pretty good for a Sonic game. Sonic Forces, oh, yeah, absolutely, got like a lot of fives and sixes, and yeah. that game was fucking bad. Yeah. Um, I think this is a good sign it's not just a good sign for the game i think this is a good sign for the series as a whole mm -hmm. because it, it's clear that sega cared about this game and that they wanted this game to be a big deal and to, they wanted it to matter the you know the big thing was they delayed the, uh, the game an entire year mm -hmm. it missed the 30th anniversary of sonic the hedgehog because they wanted this game to be as good as it can be good and i'm now glad the they did yeah <laughs> I mean, I, I tweeted this before, but the launch trailer for this game used Queen's Don't Stop Me Now. So if they're shelling out money for Queen, yeah, that's a you big know deal. they think this is they think this is a top tier game. And while you know it got a 70, you know, I think I think if you know people don't seem to hate it and if the fans can embrace it on any level, then it'll show Sega that they have something here. And by the time they do another Sonic game, because they're going to do another Sonic game, they might refine and fix what worked and didn't work in this game for Frontiers 2. And we can get the true open zone Sonic game that they actually wanted. Yeah, I hope that they learn from the games that they make. Like, yeah. like it, Sonic Forces seems like they didn't learn anything at all. It seems like they took it all was. of the dumb shit that they thought people liked and just ignored all of the problems people had with yeah. uh with with like Sonic 06 and stuff like that. So Sonic Frontiers uh looks like they're trying new things, which is which is good. I yeah. wish they fixed I wish they spent more time on some of the technical problems. Like people are saying the Switch version isn't that good. Um Yeah. Uh Q73 Power says Wood says the Switch version doesn't run well. And yeah, I've heard that before too. Uh, Wood, uh, level 100 says uh, yeah Wood said the opening of Sonic Frontiers on the PS5 is a full drone shot but on the Switch it's just a slideshow of locations with pop in everywhere uh, I with so I know where like we talk about the Switch a lot Uh, I'm 100% getting this on Steam so I could play it on the Steam Deck yeah I'm gonna get it on Xbox which is really sad. Like, I, I would like to play it on the Switch yeah. so I can talk to you guys about it. But I kind of want to enjoy this game. <laughs> it seems like, with the exception of Sonic Mania, every Sonic game released on Switch has had major technical issues. Even the Sonic collection. The collection exactly. of retro games had issues on the Switch. Yeah. It ran at a lower frame rate than the other consoles, which I don't understand because Mania ran at 60. Um forces and sonic colors ultimate were both the worst versions of those games on switch so it's it, something about this 
something about this that system uh sonic team doesn't know how to develop it's it's we can't say that I mean, it's it's easy to say that the switch is holding back the generation. The switch is 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 the is the anchor that's keeping all of the other systems or keeping developers from from developing truly like 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 next gen graphics and stuff because uh, they have to develop for all of the systems. But there's no excuse for thirty year old games to run <laughs> poorly on the yeah. switch. That yeah. was a mistake. That is pure laziness. Or I yeah. shouldn't say laziness. Very terrible mismanagement from Sega. You know, to, to, yeah. to, 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 they developed it poorly. They developed that coll- the Origins collection poorly. And we're probably seeing a lot of that with this. Because Sonic Frontiers looks pretty good. It doesn't look that good. You could have <laughs> made it work on the Switch. You yeah. know? I mean, and again, like we've seen from Doom and Wolfenstein mm. and Alien Isolation and, you know, other games of that nature. It's possible to get modern AAA games working on the Switch. You just have to know what you're doing. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it looks like Sonic Team or whoever develops these games for Sega for Switch don't seem to have the resources necessary to actually learn how to do it properly. Yeah. It's 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 sad to see because I do want Sonic to have some good games, you know, and, yeah. and it's going to I mean, a lot of problems with Sonic games is game design because they haven't mm-hmm. quite figured out how to design good 3D Sonic games. Yeah. Um but Sounds like they did, but or they're on the precipice of it with this one it's going to be held down by technical issues. So yeah. if they iron out the technical issues, you probably could have gotten a few, like a point or two from a couple of these, these outlets that gave yeah. you like a seven, you know? So I, I I think that there's still, I'm glad that they're working on shit. Still a lot of room to, 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 yeah. to, to go here. I'm excited. I will probably, I want to try to play it tonight, but I don't know. I don't know how that's going to work out. Uh, did you I do want to play up, it before we do the Nintendo podcast because I have a feeling. Did you we're sign up that. for the uh the newsletter? No, why? Because if you sign up for the newsletter, you get uh free DLC of Sonic shoes from Sonic Adventure 2. Oh, fuck. Can, can I still do that? I want <laughs> I think that. so. That's I got cool. my emails today. I used all of my emails to get the soap shoes for all of the systems I own. Oh my god. <laughs> Just so I'm prepared. If I can't get it on Xbox, I'll get it on PlayStation. Do you have a PC one? <laughs> uh, no, because I don't play PC games. I, you bitch. So I, I know I'm getting your PC. Um, oh, yeah. It's literally I, right and there. I thought, and I thought to myself, this is a side tangent. I thought to myself, okay, and now that I have Bob's PC, maybe I could play Gotham Knights on it. I know it's not a good game. I still kind of want to play it. It's Batman related. I have to play it. Mm-hmm. However... On the Steam page for that game, it says it's not Steam Deck compatible. It's probably small text. No, I think it has to do with the stability of the game itself. That would be terrible. Yeah. So I'm kind of afraid to get it for <laughs> PC. Because not saying you don't you're not giving me a good PC, but like I don't I can't guarantee that the game's gonna run. Well, Steam lets you refund within an hour, I think, or two hours. True. So you could try it. I, I, this PC should be able to handle it. You might right. just have to drop the resolution to like 1080p. Um, right. But I've been I friggin' I I that thing is only got a 1070 in it, but I've been I play like some games I play like are at a really high frame rate and stuff. So yeah. I, I think you should be you should be fine. Uh, it's been upgraded to playable. <laughs> wow. Been upgraded to playable because some in-game text is small and maybe difficult to read. I don't know say it. Every time it's small text. <laughs> but I swear to God, like I checked it last week and it said uh incompatible due to like stability issues. They for sure patched it. Yeah. Uh, we're not talking about Sonic because uh, Sega hired some lore masters. Well, no, they're hiring a lore uh, master. They put okay. out the uh, where is it? 
If a series runs for 30 years and includes games, TV shows, movies, and comics, the timeline is going to get pretty confusing. Sonic the Hedgehog's lore might be too confusing to untangle, but Sega is hoping it can make things a little clearer by hiring someone to sort out the Blue Blur's history. Uh, if you spend every waking moment trying to figure out where exactly Sonic Mania fits on the 30-year-long timeline uh, and lose sleep wondering whether there's a classic whether there's a classic dimension, Sega might be might have the job for you. Uh, being advertised now on LinkedIn and highlighted oh. by Tracker TD on Twitter is a position as is the position of associate manager of lore at Sega HQ in California. Uh, we will you will be immersed in the organiza- in the organizing and shaping of Sonic lore, canon, characters, and universes, helping to bring consistency, connectivity, and creativity to all things Sonic across various forms of media. Uh, the, the successful applicant's duties will include reviewing content for narrative accuracy and verifying lore documentation. Uh, that sounds like the best job. I know. Well, it sounds like an awesome job, but it also sounds like it could be really fucking stressful. Yeah, <laughs> because, because you, have to, Sonic, you have, you have yeah. to tell these people, like, you can't do that because Sonic yeah. uh, only eats chili dogs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, before you speed off and apply, you will need to, uh, more than just deep knowledge of Sonic the Universe to get the job. Some recent revelations about uh, by Ian Flynn, uh, who wrote Sonic comics for a long time, may have also nullified some of the things you thought you knew about Sonic lore. Flynn squashed the theory that there are two dimensions in Sonic's world, uh, taking the belief that current Sonic and classic Sonic are two different hedgehogs along with it. Yes, this does fly in the face of what was said in Sonic Forces, uh, starting to see why Sega needs help untangling its own lore. Well, to, I always thought classic Sonic and modern Sonic, like modern Sonic was just an older version of classic Sonic. That's how I always saw it. Yeah, I think I think Sonic Forces does something different with that, which is another reason why that game sucks. <laughs> uh, we could just pretend like that game never happened because nobody wants to remember it. You know, so. Yeah, when uh when Koji Igarashi took over Castlevania, he erased three games from the timeline. <laughs> yeah. So I mean they do it with Zelda all the time. <laughs> True. <laughs> um, this is not, you know, this is not something that's uh, specific to Sonic. Most uh big media franchises that have like the tangled web of continuity have somebody to manage the lore famously star wars at lucasfilm they there's a core group of like i think three or four people whose job it is to like work with all the creatives to make sure nothing contradicts each other Mm -hmm. so well then of course desperately need that because star wars has such a huge and important lore Uh, important is just what i hate that i said that because it's fucking (laughs) it's it's a fake it's it's made up stories but for some reason star wars seems like important to have everything all together well yeah it's and you know not to you know start the whole disney star wars era debate but things happen a lot cleaner now mm-hmm. that that's been under disney because they've been able to like actually focus and maintain a strict continuity because they're actually involved it wasn't like back when lucas owned everything he had a more hands-off approach to like all the books and video games and stuff. Right. And people just went crazy and did whatever they wanted. Yeah. But you know what? So, kind of liked when it was the Wild West. We got some, some, cool some shit. of that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, some of that stuff was excellent and some of that stuff was objectively terrible. <laughs> <laughs> all right. We got more to talk about. Yes. What's we have next? Hideo Kojima denies involvement with Blue Box Game Studio. Now, I don't know if I ever thought that Kojima was involved with um, the. Yeah, the the game that they had coming out. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Okay. Nobody I've ever... Well, I'll read the article. Uh, Hideo Kojima is is an enigma wrapped in a mystery. You'll never know what he is doing unless he tells you about it. This is why plenty of fans genuinely believe he had something to do with the mysterious Blue Box Game Studio and its PlayStation exclusive Abandoned. Uh, Now Kojima has gone out of his way to dismiss the rumors... Here's what Kojima said to his BFF, Jeff Keighley, on the Brain Structure podcast. Users just keep sending me pictures of this Hassan. Uh, They still send me collages and deep fake images like 20 a day. It's really quite a nuisance. This has been going on for almost two years now. 
The timeline matches up to when Abandon was first revealed. At the time, most fans had believed that the cryptic horror game was a Silent Hill project in disguise. It also didn't help that Hassan uh, Karaman shared the same initials as Hideo Kojima, which only fueled all the rumor, which only fueled all the rumors. Uh, finally, what uh, what really sealed the deal for a lot of gamers is the fact that Kojima has done this sort of thing before. Yes. It's worth <laughs> noting that Metal Gear Solid 5 was initially revealed under a different name, The Phantom Pain, with Moby Dick Studio as the developer. Things go out of control that things got out of control that Karaman ended up showing his face to prove that he wasn't Kojima and it wasn't enough. As we've learned from Kojima, people still insist that Blue Box Studios and Kojima are somehow associated with each other, even after Konami has revealed the slate of Silent Hill games, including Silent Hill 2 Remake. For what it's worth, Kojima doesn't seem frustrated or upset at what's happening. According to the Death Stranding creator, Blue Box Studio, Blue Box, Blue Box Game Studios, nailed it, uh, should take advantage of the buzz and create something good and share it with everyone. Uh, Blue Box Game Studios later thanked Kojima for clarifying things while also reassessing, reassuring fans that the game is still in development. So, I mean, I didn't think this was Kojima behind the scenes, but um, even him saying he's not involved is not confirmation that he's not involved. Yeah. <laughs> he could very much be lying and he has done something like that before. Yeah. I mean... I I don't think he's involved because mm -hmm. he would have at this point admitted he was involved. Mm -hmm. Like it would have been a big grand reveal, and it just is hasn't happened yet. Because when you know when they did the Phantom Pain, like mm -hmm. it wasn't that long until Kojima revealed himself to be the guy behind it, and there was another Metal Gear. Game. Also, it was kind of obvious it was a Metal Gear game from the first trailer because um, mm -hmm. the guy looked exactly like Snake. But so, so I, I'm a, another I don't want to keep adding to this rumor that I think is probably not true. But the game studio's name is Blue Box. Yeah. Another rumor that Blue Point is working on a remake of Metal Gear Solid. Mm. So what if this is a remake of Metal Gear Solid? <laughs> <laughs> that is, there's there's a possibility there. Well, doesn't Sony now own Blue Point? Yes. So, unless Konami is like working on some deal with them, I don't yes. know. Yes. Uh, there's potential. There's potential that could be happening. I guess. Anyway, um, so we don't. We it's Kojima doing wacky shit, but he says he's yeah. not involved. But I don't believe. I don't. I don't buy it. We'll, we'll, I buy uh, it. I, I don't think he's involved in this. I didn't think he was, but now I'm I'm putting more pieces <laughs> together. Now I want to be a conspiracy theorist. Now now I'm involved. Okay. Uh, and then his new game leaks. Look at that. Yeah. So remember that rumor regarding Hideo Kojima developing a horror game, Overdose, starring Death what Stranding, a busy man. Whaley. Uh, well, that footage that was well, the footage that was the source of the overdose rumors has leaked online. As was reported by Try Hard Guides last June, the footage shows a character resembling uh, Quayle, who played Mama in Death Stranding, walking through dark corridors with a flashlight in third person. The video is mostly quiet, save for some audio stings and the jump scare at the end, uh, which cuts to a screen displaying Game Over that morphs into Overdose a with a Hideo Kojima game appearing above the title. I'm watching yes. it right now. I don't want to show it because I feel like we're going to yeah. get a, a, a copyright strike. But uh, so this this isn't involved in, with Death Stranding. It's a different character, just played Is by the same person. Correct. Okay. A streamable link to the overdose footage was subsequently taken down, but not before the video made it onto YouTube, which you can view below. Uh, this once again leads into the recent hints that Kojima has been dropping regarding El Fanning and Shirori uh, Kutsuna. Uh, being involved in a new Hideo Kojima game. This is on top of the, his studio, Kojima Productions, teaming up with Xbox Game Studios for his next game. And while we didn't get any word from Kojima during the, uh, this past June's Summer Games Fest regarding the project, here's hoping we can hear about it or Death Stranding 2 at next month's Game Awards. So this video, this is a horrible video. It's, <laughs> it's, it's the leaked footage of the game 
playing in a YouTube player that is being filmed by a phone and then somebody filmed that phone. <laughs> so it's a phone filming a phone filming a phone. Mm-hmm. Wait, a phone filming a phone filming a phone. Yes. That's what we're watching. We're watching three layers of this. And it looks, it, it, yeah. it's, it's just literally just the, the the person who played the person in Death Stranding walking around with the flashlight. That's literally what it is. It's not interesting at all. And then I get okay, and then and then yeah, and then she gets attacked. Oh my god, the, yeah. I have to I have to show I have to show the ending. <laughs> I, I I'll i I'm gonna play this very last bit. I'm gonna turn my camera on so that you can see it. Oh, and I crashed. I crashed Discord doing that. I crashed Discord by doing that. I guess you're not going to be able to see it. Uh, uh, fine. I'll just watch it over here. Uh, just scroll to the very end of the video. Okay, hold on. Y- you see the jump scare, and then like the game over screen comes on. Uh huh. And then it shows the guy who was filming it, <laughs> like in the in the reflection. Oh, it's right. buffering. God damn it. Oh, of course, my yeah. whole my whole computer is like freaking out now. Yeah, what are you doing? God damn it! Oh, I see, I it's, see it. it. It's literally a guy shirtless. You see his yeah shirtless body in the reflection. <laughs> it won't let me show it. God damn I it! I saw it. You'll have to just. Yeah, take, take our word it. for take it. Take our word for it. Now my computer's freaking out because I tried to show Will my stupid camera. I got it. Oh, there it is. It played. There he is. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, oh, shit. I f- oh, shit. I'm on camera now. Oh, shit. Yeah. I should have put a shirt on for this. I didn't know 200,000 people were going to watch this. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Uh, yeah, that wasn't. That wasn't very interesting. I don't think that was supposed to be like a a public trailer at all. Yeah. I'm sure we'll get something that's more exciting than that. I gotta finish Death Stranding. I gotta. I want to play that on Steam Deck. I hope that eventually I'll be able to ca- carry my save file over. Uh, is there a way to ca- like? Have you been able to ca- carry over PlayStation games over to Steam? Like your save? Spider Man. You really? can do it with Spider Man. Yeah. Ah. So, uh, I hope that that comes to Death Stranding. That'd be sick. <laughs> yeah. Any, anyway, let's plow through some more news. I think I have to pee. So, uh, okay. you read this. Okay. Uh, Halo Infinite's live service plan fell short, Xbox Game Studios boss says. Uh, Halo Infinite is nearly a year old, but memory of the game frustrating launch and post-launch period is still fresh in players minds but halo fans aren't the only ones let down by infinite's release in the friends per second podcast head of xbox game studios matt booty uh spoke candidly about the game's launch frustrations and how it's on microsoft to do better in the future uh booty described halo infinite's launch as a classic runner's mistake of tripping and stumbling as you come across the finish line he blames this failure primarily on the pandemic and how it disrupted the game, the development team, which consists of hundreds of people around the world, all working on Halo Infinite. So while he gave, while he gives kudos to the team for getting the game out at all in 2021, he knows players are frustrated by what could have been. Chipping a game is just the beginning, he said. Um, there's got to be a plan for content. Uh, post-launch content is something Halo Infinite really struggled with over the past year. Campaign co-op, split screen co-op, and Forge map editor all missed uh, the game's launch window. Online campaign co-op only recently came to Halo Infinite with the studio ultimately canceling the split screen mode. Uh, The Forge will launch today, a full year after Halo Infinite's debut. Uh, The campaign and Forge frustrations have been one thing, but Halo Infinite's multiplayer updates have also been few and far between. Uh, the game has excellent bones, which landed it on Polygon's uh, Game of the Year list. Uh, but without new and exciting content to keep players logging in, it doesn't stand much of a chance of staying relevant in 2022 and beyond. But that's something Booty is hoping to fix. The burden is on us, he said. 
the executive went on to call out some key leadership changes and team moves that will uh, make updating the game easier as they go. Halo Infinite had a disappointing year, to say the least, but Booty claims Microsoft is committed to riding the ship and has already begun to do so. Whether 343 Industries can make good on Booty's promises and perhaps more importantly, when they can make good remains to be seen. Yeah, I was very disappointed with Halo Infinite. It was like good, I'd... but like there wasn't a lot in the multiplayer and I feel like it could have been a lot better. I think uh, a lot of people feel the same way. And even uh, Microsoft is now finally coming out and admitting that they, it, it's weird. It's it's good when like a company admits when they miss the mark, but at the mm-hmm. same time, like you, you just want to like smack them because like, why didn't you just hit the mark in the first yeah. place? It's disappointing because like there was a lot of cool ideas. Like I did kind of like the loot system in halo yeah. like having cool shit to unlock makes you want to play the game more but there yeah. wasn't really a lot of cool shit and the uh, the hoops you had to jump through to unlock the stuff was ridiculous so yeah. like giving the small little dopamine rushes of like collecting stuff while you're playing the multiplayer would slowly hook me you know but it it, it didn't and and the bigger team battles would have been better, but like they didn't work. They like turned them off after a week. It, it, it was, it was a mess. I feel like they could, they, they could have done a lot better and they even delayed the game a whole fucking year and they couldn't figure it out. So, well, yeah, because you know, like with Sonic, this was like Microsoft's premier flagship series. They had to get it right. Um, and I guess they got it as right as they could. Right. Uh, they got the game out. People liked it initially, but they didn't keep the updates coming. They didn't keep, you know, the momentum of that game going. Sonic Frontiers is one thing. That's a single player game. That game comes out and like you release patches and stuff. And, you know, you can ultimately end up with a satisfying game. But Halo Infinite, because it's a always online multiplayer game and you always want new things for it. That has to be constantly updated. And it just it just wasn't. Yeah, they didn't update it enough. It was way too slow. And yeah. it's unfortunate. Uh, okay, well, let's rapid fire through the rest of this because we're getting late here. Okay, uh, Lionsgate wants to make a triple A John Wick video game, which is nice. Uh, but during the, a recent earnings but call, but they Lionsgate want a th- fuck ton of money. Oh, no, a triple A John Wick game. I thought they yeah. wanted like triple the money. And that, I don't know how I read that so wrong. <laughs> During ahead. a recent earnings call, Lionsgate CEO John uh, Felthimer uh, said that the company has been pursuing pitches for a John Wick game, but details are currently spotty. I don't want to get ahead of myself here. We've been uh, fielding proposals. Uh, we certainly are interested in moving uh, that forward, but I don't want to say any more about it at that t- at this time. Uh, I would play the shit out of a AAA John Wick video game. While it's full of awesome action sequences, bookended by what I can only describe as gun porn, (laughs) the movies are already teeming with secret societies, uh, bounties delivered via rotary phones, uh, bullet sponge enemies, and the the, dulcet tones. tones So... Are there any gun fu games besides the Matrix games? The only one of the closest things I can think of was um, the beginning of Max Payne three when you're in the club scene and like you get into a shootout there. Mm-hmm. But at the same, like it's not really John Wick ish because you're like John Wick gets up close and personal when he mm-hmm. shoots people. He never really shoots people from a distance. And like when Max Payne, like you're cover shooting, you're shooting from a distance. Um, you're using the bullet time, which isn't really applicable in John Wick. So it, it was more like the tone and the setting that made me think of Max Payne three as like being a good John Wick. Max Payne three always reminded me of Man on Fire. Yes, which was a little. I mean, that still had kind of gun fu, but it was more yeah more shooting than than yeah. than sort of like martial arts. Fucking uh, what's his name in that? I forgot his name. I'm, I'm uh, like that's Denzel? a Washington. Yeah, he mostly just beat the shit out of people. It wasn't really yeah. like kung fu. He was just beating the shit out of people. Um, yeah. but I think there's a lot that could be done with shooting and also melee combat. The only games yeah. that come to mind to me are Metal Gear Solid yeah. and uh, 
Resident Evil 4. Yeah. But they don't focus so much on the, uh, 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 I guess, melee combat. Like, yeah. Metal Gear does have a lot of melee stuff, but uh, it doesn't, like, work in con- it like smoothly in conjunction with the shooting. Yeah. And also, like, the, the melee in Metal Gear, especially, like, the latest is technical. You know, you mm-hmm. got to, like, know what you're doing to, like, grab yeah. them properly and throw them to the ground. A game like John Wick, you would want to, like, just, it, like, go up to the person, beat them up, and then move on. Uh, you know, and I- Dandy Dante says Stranglehold. That's true, but uh, yeah. that that also is well, that's that reminds that's, me of Max Payne. It's like shooting and like bullet yeah. time and like jumping around. Yeah, exactly. I'm talking about a mix between like melee combat and also shooting. Yeah, like like um, like Sifu, and also you can shoot people. <laughs> yeah, uh, the article does mention <laughs> that we've gotten a John Wick game before, John Wick Hex, developed by Bithel Games. Uh, while John Wick Hex had an interesting premise and art style, it was a short and somewhat disappointing experience that didn't go much to explore the lore and the larger world of the John Wick universe. It was also a like tactical strategy game, which mm-hmm. I don't think people really like think of when they think of it, of a John Wick game that they yeah. would want to play. Yeah. Uh, Lucifer's friend says Sleeping Dogs. That's a good point. That Sleeping is a good dogs. point. Yes. Sleeping Dogs is is a good one. That's more like a Grand Theft Auto style. Uh, Grand Theft Auto style. Um, the combat was very arc, like the arc the hand to hand combat. Yeah, yeah. But I, I, you know, I think like we've reached a point where like people can do Arkham combat different from what how Arkham Asylum. Well, did Arkham, it. and then also you shoot people. Yeah, and, and you can do that now in Gotham Knights. But the shooting yes. is like <laughs> wacky, weird, like rubber yeah. bullets. Yeah, and also like he could teleport because he was dead once, but he got over it. That's why he could teleport. Yeah, it's it's part of like his resurrection nonsense, which I I want to clarify. Jason Todd and the comics cannot do that. <laughs> uh, all right, more stuff. Final Fantasy sixteen is that what this is? Yeah, uh, I I wrote that quick. I see that. Uh, Final Fantasy sixteen is according to place uh, PlayStation five ad exclusive to PS five for six months. Okay, uh, in a new ad about the PlayStation 5's DualSense wireless controllers features, Final Fantasy 16 was briefly shown with a disclaimer at the bottom. Final Fantasy 16 anticipated uh, summer 2023, PS5 exclusive for six months. While we've known that uh, Final Fantasy 16 has been a timed console exclusive for the PS5, it was still unclear uh, for exactly how long. Sony's deals uh, can vary greatly. Uh, Ghostwire Tokyo and Deathloop were 12 month timed exclusives. While Forspoken is a PS5 exclusive for 24 months. I forgot about Forspoken. Yeah. <laughs> that game's got a lot of problems. Yeah. Uh, f- yeah, while Xbox fans, while Xbox players are left in the dust for now, Final Fantasy 16 uh, will at least come to PC. The concern is when it will come to PC. Back when Square Enix announced the game at a PS5 showcase, uh, the live stream included the words also available on PC. Yet the official trailer was uploaded and removed. Mention any uh, such version. So, it, I'm, I'm assuming that it's going to come out the same day as the Xbox version comes out, six months after the PS5. Right, right. So is this this is a okay? This is a single player game. This is not yes. the because isn't like every other version of Final Fantasy the an MMO? No, there's only two. There's the 11 and 14 are the MMO. Well, that's it. I thought it was yeah. I thought they like skipped every generation. They alternate. No. Okay. So uh, that's cool. People like Final Fantasy. I <laughs> I don't. Well, I think I think it's interesting because you know we live in a world where everything comes to the same system the same day. Final Fantasy started doing that a few mm-hmm. generations ago. Um, but we also live in a world where like console exclusivity. It's starting to become a big deal again. Mm-hmm. Um, like the, like this article said, Ghostwire Tokyo and De- uh, Deathloop were exclusive for a year. Forspoken is going to be exclusive for two. Um, and this is uh, Square Enix game we're talking about. There's all that rumor that like Sony is going to buy Square Enix or like Square Enix wants to be bought by Sony. Mm-hmm. Um, so them going exclusive to Sony for any amount of time is interesting. Six months... 
Like, why even bother at that point? Like, six <laughs> months is not a long time. Yeah, that's uh, a little ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, it's to it's to sell systems. So, I mean, hopefully they didn't pay that much for a six month exclusive. Yeah. But you know what? They probably know this that exclusivity sells. Saying six months though publicly is kind of uh, uh, probably a bad move. Usually they keep yeah. that secret and then they announce it later when the six months is up. So it's coming. It's anticipated for summer 2023. So let's assume it does come out in like July of summer 2023. So then six months, August, September, October, November, December, January. Uh, Xbox will miss the holiday window for Final Fantasy. That's a big like, deal. That's a big that deal. That is a big deal. But, you know, also like we live in a time where like a lot of games like still come out in January, like mm-hmm. big games. They missed the holiday rush, but like they still managed to rake up a decent, uh, you know, a decent amount of sales. So maybe chat, it doesn't matter. Chat is saying Xbox is not confirmed, but PC is confirmed for the six months. So that makes sense because a lot of PlayStation games are coming to PC. So right, but a lot of Sony published PlayStation games are coming to PC. Uh-huh. This is a Square Enix published game, so they can put it on PC whenever they want. <laughs> well, it could be like a Death Stranding situation. Right. Where it's like, it's really close with PlayStation, but like, not really. Yeah, that's, that's a weird one though, because Sony published it on, Sony funded it and published it on PlayStation, but like, the PC version is by 505 Games. Oh. Uh... Yeah. So when did the Xbox, did the, wait, there it is on, Death Stranding is on Xbox now, right? No. It's on PC Game Pass, but it's not on Xbox. What the fuck? Yeah. That's okay. okay weird. Okay, so yeah. there's potential that this game is not covering Xbox at all. Or 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 at least for a while after that. It might not even Maybe. be Maybe. it might not even be six months. It might be longer than that. So anyway. More to talk about. Yes. Ubisoft uh, is talking about Prince of Persia. Okay. I'll just do this quick. Go. People started, like, people had already pre ordered the Sands of Time remake, and those pre orders have started to get canceled. And because Ubisoft has not said boo about this game in a very long time, people are just assuming it was quietly canceled. Mm-hmm. So they tweeted, uh, no, it's not. Click this link to learn more. And the links, they had to make a blog post on their website. The state of the game, Prince of Persia Sands of Time remake is not canceled. It's currently in development at Ubisoft Montreal. Uh, beyond Prince of Persia Sands of Time, there are currently no plans to remake any other Prince of Persia title at this moment. A release date has not been set, and we will provide new information on that front when we are ready. Um, since the game currently does not have a release date, existing pre-orders have been canceled and refunded where applicable. Pre-orders may reopen once a new release date for the game has been announced. I mean, games are just taking way longer than uh, uh, projected to come out now. So I don't know how to feel about this. Ubisoft does not give a fuck about Prince of Persia anymore. Once Assassin's Creed came out and they said, oh shit, we can make a lot of money if we just beat this dead horse. Yeah, they decided to do that. And to be fair, I mean, Assassin's Creed is kind of just the spiritual successor of Prince of Persia, anyway. Yeah. So uh, I don't, I I don't know how committed Ubisoft is to, I mean, the Prince of Persia franchise. They they switch developers of this game of the remake. Mm-hmm. They switch it from one studio to another to try and get it, you know, into a playable state. So they they care enough mm-hmm. to do that. Um, I think I remember hearing somewhere part of the reason why they stopped caring about Prince of Persia is because they don't Ubisoft doesn't technically own it. They have to pay a fee to Jordan Mechner, the guy who created Prince Prince of Persia. Oh, that's Every awesome time they do that. for him. Yeah, so that's why we haven't gotten a Prince of Persia game since two thousand and eight. Mm-hmm. Um, but Sands of Time is a classic. Everybody loves that game. Uh, everybody would love to see it like brought back in that style so like a remake of it kind of makes sense to a certain extent um i think somewhere like they know this is a this is a big deal and like they want to get it right i just don't trust 
the Ubisoft of 2022 to get it right. <laughs> right, right. Um, okay, last news, Gears of War. Uh, yeah, it's uh coming to Netflix. <laughs> God, does Gears of War even have a good story? No. I, pl- I played the first two, I think. Yeah. And yeah, I, I, people like the Gears of War story. I don't know why. It's not good. <laughs> so Netflix is making a feature film adaptation followed by an adult animation series based on the sci-fi shooter franchise. The streamer also notes that there are potential for more stories to follow. I don't like them calling Netflix the streamer because I was like, wait, who <laughs> talked about it? Did did Shroud yeah. talk about it? <laughs> um, I, yeah, I don't. I mean, I don't know. I, it's weird. I don't know. It's a weird. It's... Is this like a? I think Gears of War is like hyped up by guys who drink Monster Energy or something like that. Like who make yeah. that their personality and like drive big trucks and stuff. Like they like uh, <laughs> they 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 like Gears of War. It's the type of game that like presents itself as this like very serious, very dark, very like meditative story about war and the horror of it and what it does to people and how like, you know, it, it's hell. But at the same time, the gameplay loop is like, fuck yeah, let's yeah, go. Yeah. You know, it's the ultimate example of that. Um, so like the games are fun. You know, for the most part, um, but it's not going to translate well to a movie at all. Maybe an adult animation, but yeah, I don't know. My th- the reason why I went a little hard on the people who like Gears of War is because like just the just the style. It's like all the dudes are like big, bulky like guys, and everything's like really gritty. And there's like some sappy story. But it's like sappy to like big military dudes. <laughs> and yeah. It's like not it, it's not oh like a like an like an interesting story or or, or yeah no, or it's, like it's not anything like like revolutionary. The revolutionary part of Gears of War was that it was a cover shooter, and then everybody else yeah. did it, and then it and then it wasn't unique anymore. Um, it, 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 I, I'm bringing yeah. up the the the, the way it. Look at the co- look at the character designer. He looks like he looks like a guy from the game. <laughs> These are the types of guys that are interested in Gears of War. Yeah. Um. You, you know, it it's got the type of story that gives you just enough context to like a pre- like appreciate what you're doing in the game. Mm-hmm. You no, know? but it's not the type of story that's gonna like sit with you for years the same way like you know like a Metal Gear story does or Bioshock or Braid or something like that yeah you know yeah. It, so I don't I don't I think it's very strange for Netflix to be trying to jump on board I feel what? like there needs to be somebody high up at Netflix who actually fucking plays games and doesn't just look what? at numbers and be like this is a popular franchise we should uh try to ruin it well, I think you bring up a good point because Netflix, they've been making a really big push into not just, you know, we talked about like their push into like gaming with the games you can play through the Netflix app or like they're getting into cloud game streaming soon. But like the properties that they're making, like Castlevania and Cyberpunk and the um, League of Legends series and The Witcher, like they're looking at video games as the next thing for them to adapt and make streaming shows and movies based on. Mm-hmm. So they're clearly looking at this medium as something they can be a part of. And, you know, I don't think, I mean, I don't know. Cause Microsoft gave halo to paramount plus, And that show looks like it was filmed in somebody's backyard, <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, Netflix has more capital than Par than paramount to make a show out of for streaming. Um, so maybe, <sighs> Uh, I don't. I don't know. Like, I feel like Nef. Like, not that Netflix gets games, but they understand like the relevancy of video games and like the ability the video games have to be adapted in another medium properly. I think that they could do a good job. I don't think that they will do a good job. Well, I, I, I think I, the I, source material doesn't help. That's what I'm saying. I I think that there's 
like some th- some things you just can't do anything with. Some things yeah. you just it's not worth it. And <laughs> I I think that's nobody's fucking playing gears for the story. That's ridiculous. <laughs> anyway, uh, and yeah, K Jack, people in the chat are bringing up good points. Cyberpunk edge runners. Uh, uh, J- John got the juice. Says Netflix is doing Horizon. They're doing yeah. Assassin's Creed and Gears of War. Uh, so they're doing a lot. Yeah. Um. So yeah, that they, they they there's potential. Again, I think that it's Gears of War. There's not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not much you could do with it. Anyway, it's tweet of the week time. I'm gonna try do my it. best not to blow out your eardrums, but I don't know if I can help it. Okay, I think I successfully did not blow out your eardrums. <laughs> I think I did it. Uh, okay, anyway, here it is. Uh, this is from Rent YouTuber Kids. Okay, YouTube Kid. Okay, real YouTube Kid. Okay, all right, whatever. Uh, it is motherfuckers who ain't leaving Twitter no matter how bad it gets, and it's Eustace from uh, Courage Cowardly <laughs> Dog. And he's sitting in his chair. He says, no, sir, not getting out of this chair. And behind him is, I think, the end of the world in Evangelion. Yeah. Yeah, I think that is. Yeah. So uh, I didn't make it that far in Evangelion. I got to like, I got 20 episodes of out of 26 and I just stopped <laughs> watching. I don't know why. It had no uh, audio. People are saying it had no audio at all. You probably oh, just heard me breathing. Wow. All right, whatever. Too bad. Right. You're not getting it. Yeah. Um, um. Anyway, we'll talk to you guys really quick. Yes. Uh, if you left a comment on last week's Wolfden podcast, this is the part of the show we will finally answer you. Um, and then, of course, everyone watching right now, please start leaving your questions and comments. Last week is the episode where I had to take a phone call where I learned that I owed a lot of money to the electric company <laughs> and, <laughs> and would... Uh, subbed in just yes in the very beginning of the show with no warning whatsoever <laughs> so uh colin nolan says will might appreciate this but wood jumping in reminds me of what danny rand wet when danny rand steps in as daredevil after matt murdoch gets arrested during civil war uh yes i remember that it was a weird time but um yeah danny rand took over as daredevil while matt murdoch was in jail <laughs> i did not um, i read yeah, civil was- war and i did not know that well, because Civil War is one of those comics where, like, there's the main story, mm-hmm. but then there's, like, 10,000 tie-ins that you have to read if you want to know, like, the in-between stuff. Yeah, I only read so, the main stuff. It's all, you, it's all you ever really need to read. <laughs> Sam says, hearing my comment getting yelled made me jump, LMAO. Don't donate your money to anti-abortion charities. Donate them to me. I want Pokemon Violet. <laughs> <laughs> I want Pokemon Violet. Donate to me. Uh, uh, Drake Drake Saint Draco Saint Drake Croissant says, "Hear me out. I have a pitch for the section with Will and Wood. Will it Wood? That's the name of the. <laughs> I like it. I like it. We're gonna use that. Uh, the guy with a name says the intro not only scared the shit out of me, but woke my roommate and scared the shit out of him also." <laughs> <laughs> Listen, man, you guys got to turn your volumes down, right? You can't keep blaming it on us. The, the volume can only go so high, and it's determined by your device. That's true. How loud are you listening to stuff? Yeah, like that's normally? what I'm saying. <laughs> There's a level. I'm looking at levels, and we did blow the levels to all hell, but come on, yeah. you got to lower. Anyway. Um, uh, go for it, says, congratulations on the house, Bob. It's been great to watch you guys starting the show in your parents' basement to where you are now. Aw. Aw. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Uh, well, next week, we'll do it back in our parents' basement. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. I, so, I did just get a brand new house. It's great. Uh, yeah. However, it's giving me severe allergies, <laughs> specifically in the basement. Ooh. So, I'm, try- for, I'm trying to get the hell out of here right now. <laughs> And because I'm, I can't breathe. And also, I'm trying to fix it before I drag you into this, Will. But uh, 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 Will, welcome uh, to home ownership. Yeah, I don't. I'm trying everything. Uh, yeah. 
I, I try I changed the air filter. I'm trying to blast the the fans in here. Uh I got a dehumidifier, but apparently it's not humid at all. So it didn't collect any water. I don't know what the hell it is. Test for mold. I how do I do that? I don't know. Uh Got to dehumidify it. I did. It didn't collect any water. I'm going to run it all night, though. Do you have a specific air purifier? I changed the filter on it because it was very dusty. Um, right. I, I got purifiers, and I'm cranking those. Uh, I have a filter that was through the central air thing, yeah. uh, and I changed that because that was very dusty, but I put a shitty one in. And apparently there's a spot. Dad came over today and was like, this right here needs a filter. And it was a... It was a duct that had no filter in it whatsoever. So that needs a filter too. <laughs> yeah. So once I do that, I'm going to blast all the fans again. Should I have tested for mold right. before you moved in? Why doesn't a fucking home inspector do that? Yeah. <laughs> if motors behind gyrowall causes bad reactions, I have to bring someone in. To- <sighs> oh, I guess I got to do that. This deal is getting worse all the time. It really is. Anyway, uh, we're in the chat real quick. Uh, yes. Very briefly, though, because we're running very late. Yeah. Uh, uh, CJ Gabriel with 22 months says, run the air fryer overnight. <laughs> <laughs> Hannah put all of her shit in a pod, and it's not coming for a few days. So I got to wait you for the pod to get here. You want to come over and borrow my air fryer? Might have to borrow your air fryer. We have a perfectly good <laughs> oven. Could just use that. <laughs> not the same. Buying a house means every uh, problem that was $100 to fix as a renter becomes $5,000. I'm learning that, and it's very horrible, and I don't know if I can afford the first mortgage payment. <laughs> so, yes, that is true. However, you can cut that uh, significantly down if you do it yourself. <laughs> oh, no. I absolutely refuse. I had to fix my garage door. It took me like an hour, but I was able to do it for free having someone to come to do it would have been 20 minutes but it would have been like 500 bucks garage doors are one of the things that you need to be very careful because you could split yourself in half oh i almost lost a finger k jack says have you both seen the rumors of the ps5 slim sony has made it the, the processor and internals of the playstation 5 smaller and consume less power less heat already I have not seen the rumors, but we always assumed that they, that they, they, they were working on it because we, the PlayStation Five yeah. is a it's prototype. Massive. It's huge and it don't work right. Yeah, I mean, they've been revising the internals of it already. They're just keeping the same shape, the general shape. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I guess we'll get like a a slim version, but I don't think we're gonna see a slim version anytime soon. Because part of the the appeal of the slim version is, you know, they made the internal smaller, but they also made the manufacturing cost smaller so they can right. sell it at a lower price. If Sony just raised the prices of PS5s, we're not going to get like a slim version anytime soon because they want to sell out of the stock they have of the, of the big PS5s. Uh, Tech Nanner says, just hold off on paying your electric bill. You can do that for about three years, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was a throwback to last week. Yeah. Uh, Will, have you tried Marvel Snap or have either of you, says Medicine? No, but I've heard it's like everybody keeps talking about it. So I might have to give it a shot. You know, I've heard nothing but good things about it. I just I don't really feel like getting into a collectible card game at this point. I hear life. it's very like easy to get into and the and the games are really quick. And I've yeah. seen a lot of stuff on Twitter. People are going nuts about it. So I feel like I should try there you it. Go. New season started yet. There's seasons in this game. Yeah. Like the game just came out and already there's a season. Uh, I'm, I'm a little interested. Sounds like it could be yeah. fun for a hot minute. All right. We're out of here. Thank you guys All for right. hanging out. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolf Podcast is every single Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on twitch.tv slash Wolf Den. If you can't make the show for any reason at all, we always put it up as an archive version over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolf Den Podcast. So you can go and check us out over there on demand whenever you want. If you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us, you can do that as well. We're also an audio podcast on anchor.fm slash Wolf Den Podcast or your preferred podcast service of choice. But no matter where you get this show from, folks, please be sure to subscribe, rate, 
and review us because that helps us with placement on all of those respective platforms. Guess who's streaming right now? It is Jackson, and he's dressed up like Sonic. So why don't you go over there and say hello to him? Uh, I will be back on Sunday with hopefully a new regular role streaming setup. I don't know what game I'm going to play, but I'll probably play something. Hopefully, I'll play Sonic Frontiers at some point tonight or tomorrow, and uh, I will talk about it on the Nintendo podcast this week, which will be a live show this week at 1 p.m. on Thursday, Eastern Time. And we will also talk about the Indie World Direct there. And then next Tuesday, things are going to be a little different here on the Wolf Den podcast. Yes. We'll see you for all of that shit. Also, I have a video coming up on Thursday. Uh, For now, go watch Jackson. Goodbye. Bye.